Hello beautiful beings, this is Maruma 2 and you are watching Sun Soul Astrology and this is a daily planetary translation for April the 26th 2017 and today we are having a new moon in the sign of Taurus this is happening at 5 16 a.m. Pacific Standard Time 8 16 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and 12 16 Universal so this is going to be occurring in the first decan of Taurus in a set of Venus rule degrees it's happening at 6 degrees and 27 minutes of the fixed earth sign and so as we know Venus is the natural ruler of Taurus and Taurus and the earth have a gigantic connection with one another which we will be talking about but there are some serious configurations happening as far as aspects go and there is a very big echo coming back from the past at this particular moment so we are having a grand trine okay and the grand trine is occurring between Saturn at the galactic center and Uranus conjunct Mercury retrograde the reason that this is an echo from the past has everything to do with Saturn retrograde at the galactic center because the last time that Saturn was here was in 1988 and it was only here for 21 days from January the 5th 1988 to January the 26th of 1988. So this is important to note because this um, Echo coming back from the past is something that we are really going to go deep into today because the chart for today has a very strong similarity to um, this time frame that I'm speaking of. And let me not get sidetracked with this real quick, okay? The grand trine that's occurring, as I mentioned, from Saturn retrograde to Uranus conjunct Mercury retrograde, those two planets are then trining over to the North Node in Virgo at one degrees, which is then therefore trining once again, Saturn retrograde. Now, back in 1988, when Saturn was at the galactic center here, um, the North Node was in Pisces. So the opposite was um, what was occurring at that time frame. So we're having, you know, this interesting look um, you know the north node is always the direction you're supposed to head and the south node is what you're supposed to really go ahead and release some of those um aspects of so that you can really find a good solid balance because one is a comfort zone one is our uncomfortable territory so right now we you know with the nodes flipped are kind of getting a shift and at that time period in 1988, the nodes had pretty much just moved into the sign of Pisces and Virgo. And right now we are actually exiting those signs. So kind of just a coincidental aspect on our time frame. Now we also have a grand T-square that's been going on for quite a while, but you know, adding in this uh, trine is a heavy, um, message from the cosmos, you know, so this grand T-square that's been going on has been between Pluto retrograde in Capricorn, Jupiter retrograde, and um, Uranus, and Uranus's uh, opposition over to Jupiter retrograde. Again, some of this echo, okay, from the past whenever the last time Saturn was at the galactic center. Let us talk about this, okay, because at that particular time frame, uh, we had the sun transiting the sign of Capricorn, and it was at 14 degrees of Capricorn. Now we have Pluto, okay? Pluto at 19 degrees. Jupiter was in the sign of Aries at 20 degrees. Now we have Uranus and Mercury right there at 25 and 26 degrees. Neptune was conjunct the sun in Capricorn. Neptune is now at home in the sign of Pisces. So it's interesting to see it from that aspect on its own, you know, Neptune at home now, while Neptune was conjunct the sun, it's a very similar message. It's really teaching us how to dream, you know, and at the time that this was last occurring, it was teaching each individual how to dream something more beautiful for themselves. And right now, Pluto or Neptune is teaching us how to dream something much more beautiful for the collective on the unconscious level so that we're not 
counter manifesting so that we can come into a stronger co-creator aspect that isn't so tainted with our own self-doubts and negative emotional states, you know, that we have really thought ourselves to be protected in our own mind space. We've thought that our internal world was very much um, disconnected from the collective and it turns out that that is absolute falsity, right? So coming back around to this echo and this viewpoint, we are really starting to see how the cosmos have shifted to give us some brand new perspectives with some exchanges of energy because also at this time, Pluto was transiting the sign of Scorpio, really moving through that underworld, okay? And it was in a square to Venus that was transiting Aquarius. And Aquarius is the love of humanity, okay? And moving past just our own desires to love um, ourselves, okay? So we have a very big shift in this perspective, do we not? Because right now, um, Saturn in Sagittarius is squaring Venus, you know, so to think about Pluto and Scorpio going into our underworld to square that humanitarian love and now to see what the square of Venus and, and um, Saturn has done for us instead. You know, it's brought all of this to a very real place with so much reflection involved that did have to do with our underworld. You know, that did have to do with our wounds and connecting back to source creator in the aspect of love and realizing that really and truly this divine spark is radiating from all of us and we are all that divine spark. So if we're not loving ourselves, if we're not taking care of ourselves, then we're not actually truly incarnated at the end of the day. I mean, that's what Saturn retrograde at the Galactic Center really wants us to get a hold of is this self-discipline and this wisdom, this spiritual maturity that we need to evolve. And, you know, Venus today is at 29 degrees of Pisces. So this is that third rub, you know, it came through whenever it was just about to reincarnate into Aries, which is exactly where we are here again went retrograde, moved back over it for a very strong lesson once again. And now we have made it back to this particular moment in time. As you know, um, the as, as Chiron is right there along with it, you know, being very descriptive of our wound, being very cutthroat about us, making sure that we are not losing our connection to creator source that reminds us about this divinity that this new moon in Taurus is really here to bring light to and to show us, okay? So let us see. Last time, this time frame that I'm talking about, again, let's not get distracted. Chiron was in the sign of Gemini, right? And we now have Mars transiting this sign. So we might really be seeing this echo coming back on where we've gone to intellectually um, uh, crazy. You know, it's like intellect is the best thing ever. You know me, I'm a huge advocate of constantly studying and manifesting new um, information and collecting it and then distributing it. But at the same time, we need to make sure that we're doing it for the right reasons and that we're doing it with um, good intentions instead of just, you know, the games that humans play. It's a really interesting time if you ask me. So um, I did mention that the nodes were reversed. Yes. So if we can understand that with Uranus at the galactic center at that past point in the time that I'm speaking of, um, we would know that Uranus was conjunct Saturn, okay, at the galactic center. This time Saturn is here by himself. And this time he is in this trine to Uranus. So it's come back around to communicate in a new way and to transmit this DNA upgrade and this cosmic download straight through our minds of Mercury in this retrograde aspect that's making us feel these intuitive thoughts on a very visceral level. And our DNA is literally being recoded as is this holographic matrix. 
So with that being said, we are taking um, some new visions, some new mastery, some new perspectives, okay? We are understanding that we have been here before, but we are transforming the way that we proceed this time. And everything that we've been going through has been teaching us so much more about being self-assured. Really defining what beauty, what wealth, what stability means to us. So I am going to get into the degree of the moon and the sun today at the six degrees of Taurus. It is a very beautiful degree and I want to start off the energy with that so that we know what we're really um, pulling in from this particular aspect. But Taurus at six degrees is a pink diamond. The heart feels everything. It burns with a fever. Inside the burning, something marvelous is forming. Grace permits the realization of the heart's desires. You become a vessel to demonstrate, to share the beauty, the love, and the light. Yet all of this, it implicates, it's, or it's implicit, it's inherent, it's inward. It is not seen by outer eyes. You are warming through slowly, complacently. These, those qualities of soul that are best entered upon, free from reflection. The inner life is rich beyond measure with seeds which will be fertilized and given forth in the fullness of time with a consummate touch of having been through the fire to obtain what is true and lasting. This is such a beautiful degree, you know, and it, that's why I'm mentioning, you know, Venus and Earth, okay? They have the golden ratio in common. They are the only two planets in our solar system that are in line with this um, golden ratio. And with this being said, Venus every five years makes a rotation that forms a five point star. Okay, so whenever we go into the five pointed star, we find these points that it is touching. And it's a very big representation of the five star date of David in someone's natal or progress chart. Um, even in the overlay of the draconic in the natal, you can sometimes see a star of David based on the configuration. So this is all about heart centered unity. And knowing that the vibration of our planet and Venus resonate at the same tone, okay, at the same resonance vibration. So we are actually in a very beautiful um, amplification of frequencies today. And with this being said, if we do actually take this opportunity to make our intentions based on pure heart and pure intent, then we can really transmit this on such a higher level of multiple dimensions that stretches beyond just Mother Earth here. And Venus is also associated with the color green and the color pink. It's also associated with rose quartz and pink diamonds, clear quartz, um, copper, emerald, those sort of things. So we can really utilize some aspects of doing some work with some gemstones today from this degree, from the meaning of these planetary aspects. And also, um, this, this um, utilization of modalities, okay? If you really want to do some gemstone work because it's a new moon, definitely light a white, pink, or green candle. Um, pull in the energy of you know, such things like Lang Lang and Geranium, these are connected with Venus. Go out and do a nice hike so that you can embrace some of that Taurus energy and um, conquering of the earth, feeling stable and secure. Learning how to trust your next footstep is a huge aspect when it comes to learning how to hike. If you haven't ever done it before, it is important to trust your footing and trust that mother earth is going to catch you you know and get, give you a, a solid connection to her energy that's what hiking and um taking any sort of leap forward has to do 
you know so saturn again at the galactic center representing the construct of this planet was in conjunction with uranus so last time it was a very uh, possibly insecure time of the transformation that uranian instant change and instant transformation that was an absolutely destruction of disturbance to status um that conjunction must have felt really intense you know but now that we're having the trine and the new moon here it's a different vibration that we're having right now we can actually trust that the universe has given us um, this building blocks that we needed to arrive here right now and also there is an archangel Hanel or Haniel I'm not sure how to say the name but it is connected with connected with Venus this archangel is um, joy of God and grace of God you know joy of creator source and grace of creator source and this connection of the you know golden ratio has everything to do with us remembering our true soul's path because some of us are a part of the 144,000 chosen ones that are here specifically to evolve planet earth and as i mentioned the other day i would talk about this because it is those of us who are star seeds who are light workers who are walk-ins who are part of the third the first second and third wave of volunteers that came here and you know we really do have this internal knowing that we are here to actually save or transform or evolve this planet and you know that's a big task that's a big um, statement to make so it can feel very overwhelming at times but we are most definitely the ones that don't feel native to this planet um, and even if we know we've lived here many lifetimes we still don't actually feel like this is home and the reason being is that we are um, ascended masters you know we are definitely those of um a solar and the reason i use the word solar solar hierarchy is because i'm talking about the light and as the nodes move to the north node and leo once again leo is ruled by the sun the solar energy so we are having a activation of solar dna that connects us back to this origin of why we actually incarnated and you know um the 144,000 are not all incarnated into flesh form here some of them have definitely ascended past the karmic wheel of reincarnation because it's so easy to get distracted by life by emotions by the physical needs of our body and actually create karma which will you know keep us reincarnating and some of us are here just really knowing the divinity of our path and we're in it for the long haul we're not giving up on humanity we're trying to teach each other how to be co-creators as one unified whole and the only thing the only way we could really do that is to again embrace and remember our divinity and remove um those lower aspects of self you know not be jealous not be greedy not be against other people really come together in a place that is open to the transformation and to the change and not um harbor any ill feelings towards anyone or anything no matter what um someone or something has done to you because this is all part of the journey of the soul it's not part of the journey of the flesh you know the flesh is very temporary the flesh is very transient and it is um you know it's replaceable basically so what is consistent what is strong what is never ending what is undiminishable is the soul that is inhabiting each of those transient forms and this is a representation of the cosmos you know the planets that transit and how quickly the energies change and that is so true based on our flesh suit we really do have a transient shift in our perspective from the soul because then we're adding filters we're adding layers we're adding dimensions and you know basically these 144,000 that i'm talking about and it doesn't necessarily represent an exact number but it is a representation of the energy of the golden ratio and if we can understand that everything that moves forward does go ahead and take a look at where it has 
has been in the past in order to take that next step. So that's why I think it's very um, important to talk about whenever Saturn was last at the galactic center and the exchange of energies that was happening then versus now. I do encourage you to possibly um, listen to this video again and maybe do some personal research on what January of 1988 was all about in the transits because it's just too much of a coincidence, you know, and there was, again, if I, I believe I mentioned it, I'm not sure now, I can't remember, <laughs> present moment issues, okay, but yeah, there was a full moon in Cancer instead of the new moon in Taurus, and then instead of what we're coming up to, the full moon in Scorpio, there was a new moon in Aquarius. And again, Venus was in Aquarius at that time. So humanitarian aspects, Venus, qualities, love of the whole community as the South Node is moving into Aquarius where people say we're letting go of those connections, you know, but no, we're finding a stronger way to, again, co-create with one another. Realizing that your allowance for someone else to co-create in their own individual expression of the spark, which is the whole, which is the representation of the golden ratio, which is the representation of this 144,000 that I keep wanting to talk about. Um, this is the allowance of creation to keep building upon itself into the next octave, into the next level of the spiral. But um, these souls have a huge... Um, seal over them. Most of them are protected from acquiring negative karma. So even though you might be tempted for a moment, you will actually make the right decision to go ahead and move away from doing something that can definitely be destructive to your soul's path. And you know, this is about being um, a light worker who resonates with love and respect and illuminates himself past the point of um, what you perceive to be hurt, right? Because those who possess this seal are not exempt from lessons and from pain. And to the contrary, they experience it a lot of times more than others and are tempted more than others because their path needs to be of the utmost, of the highest, uh, rep, of the highest, okay? You know, we are here to reveal profound knowledge. We are here to illuminate the path for more souls to follow. We're not here to get stuck in issues. You know, we're not here to fall victims to our own flesh. And so this is where it's our job to really illuminate something that sees clearly, you know, and because the last time this time frame had the sun conjuncting Neptune, what that really meant was really um, interesting. It was hard to see, you know, and as well, this 144,000 has everything to do with Atlantis, has everything to do with bringing back the sacred knowledge of evolving humanity to the next step you know we're moving into a new age and so that's why i'm doing that pluto retrograde specials because the age is very important remember your soul's mission remember your connections right during the time of atlantis this was um the volunteers that came they went to atlantis they went to help um transition souls you know, whether the souls were wiped off the planet or, um, you know, they were transitioning from physical to spirit once again in a very heavy sense because Atlantis was <sighs> destroyed, okay? And it was an extinction per period. And we have some configurations going on in the sky now, as I've talked about, that represent an extinction of an outdated program, an outdated species, and where there was an upgrade and an evolution in the DNA, which is exactly, again, what we're getting with the trine from Saturn retrograde at the galactic center to Uranus and Mercury retrograde. Um, it's a really amazing thing, you know, but very much 
To be one of the 144,000 that's waking up right now is to remember your own Christ consciousness, your own Buddha consciousness. You know, this was also um, a time period that was referred to as the order of the stars, you know? So if you could take a look at that, you know, whenever the Templars were rising into power, whenever secret societies were rising into power, um, because they were the ones that were initiating, okay, an event to heal humanity and us moving through this age of Pisces and that connection again, you know, illusion, delusion, Pisces, that Neptunian energy with Neptune sitting at the sun last time, um, in 1988, this was where the event to heal humanity got thrown off course. Once again, it did take a step forward, but it got, um, swayed. And it's important for us to realize that we need to set our souls free. We need to set our personalities free, our, our consciousness free, you know, that this needs to be the energy that flows through the universe. So as long as we're holding it back, you know, with illusions that we need to continue to self-sacrifice, um, I, I really do hope that this is giving a larger picture of why I've been talking the way um, that I have been over these past few weeks about the transits, you know, and what it really means of stepping into our own power, of being really um, alone in this time frame. You know, we don't all have to be alone necessarily, but, you know, we have been having the shift from partnerships, from being identified in a relationship to being self-identified in a relationship to creator, you know? If we don't ever give ourselves this time, then, you know, it's, a, it's just a big disservice. And if you are one of those souls that knows, you know, any of those connections show you that you're one of them. You know, do you feel that you're connected to everything? Have you always known that there's something beyond what the standard status quo has told you about what source really is? You know, have you always known that you are very much in tune with the rhythms and the cycles? Do you ever look up at the stars and just think that that's home, not here? You know, like these are indications that you are really a part of this golden ratio. You know, this new moon is going to awaken a much stronger connection a much stronger connection as we are getting blessed with our psychic abilities, with our super consciousness awareness, with our spiritual maturity, with the ability to seek our own truth, with our thoughts being translated into feelings. It's such an amazing time frame right now. It really is. And so what this degree, you know, is talking about is the heart is feeling everything. It really, really is feeling everything. So tapping into this, not forgetting this. It burns with a fever. Inside the burning, something marvelous is forming. Grace permits the realization of the heart's desires. Wow, you know, grace permits the realization of the heart's desires. And again, you know what I mean? Call on the Archangel Haniel, the grace and the joy of God, source creator. Remembering that this is a divine grace. You as the 144 is a marker of the divine grace. This is all coming full circle. It's unbelievable, right? We just had Venus turn direct from being retrograde, from going back to source, to have another conversation, to connecting back to Chiron, our spiritual healer, to go back, have our love healed by source creator so that we can move back into Aries in a very confident, self-permitting love. You know, we can love the I am that I am about ourselves. And because of this new moon, we can feel confident. We can feel secure. We can feel beautiful by the light that shines. You know, beauty is not determined by your outer exterior. That is skin deep. 
Beauty, true illumination is defined by what is shining from your soul. It doesn't matter how beautiful your exterior is. If your soul is yuck, right? You're going to translate yuck. So allow this grace to shine through you and know that that is your worth. That is your value. That is your giving back to humanity. And we are moving into a place where we are going to be the ones that reshape everything here. We need to trust ourselves with the decisions that we make. Okay? We have surrendered our soul to a greater mission. We are here as adversaries. We are here as the ones that speak on this dimension the words of Creator Source. So we have to know that the more we taint these words with our own perceptions, our own jaded um, viewpoints, the more disservice we are doing to humanity, okay? Because it is the individual illumination of the entire whole. We're getting a whole new perspective on this. Huh. We're revealing our planetary power right here, you know? This is where we come into the big event of the healer. It's a really exper it's a really exciting time to be alive and I mean man, talk about stepping into the power, right? Because you become a vessel to demonstrate <laughs> to share the beauty, the love and the light. You really do become that vessel and that's what your vessel, the physical form is really here to do. Yet all of this implicates, all of this is implicit, is inherent, is inward. Four planets retrograde, it sure is inward. It is not seen by outer eyes. You are warming through slowly, contemptively, these qualities of soul that are best entered upon, free from reflection. Here it is again, you know, this is not seen by outer eyes because it's the inward light that shines by the outer eyes. So if we're only looking at the physical dimensions, we're going to miss the message so truly. And that we're warming through this place, these qualities, and that the soul is best entered upon free from reflection. The reflection is the judgment right here. You know, if we keep on judging the past, if we keep on judging ourselves and others, then we're never really going to get to the truth that discernment is really holding for us, which is the energy vibration. And to discern yourself that you're capable, you are here to transform this planet. So therefore, you must allow yourself the space for transformation. It's really a simple thing. The inner life is rich beyond measure with seeds which will be fertilized and are given forth in the fullness of time with a consummate touch of having been through the fire to obtain what is true and lasting. Wow. The inner life is rich beyond measure with seeds which will be fertilized and are given forth to the fullness of time. And that is us knowing that we come from ancient derivatives of Creator Source. That we have been here on this planet. That we are bringing back knowledge that can save us. That can push us forward. But we have to be willing to save ourselves. We have to be willing to heal ourselves, right? Because this is moving through the fire to obtain what is true and what is lasting. And our own transformations feel very hot and very transmutative. No coincidence that the sun was in Capricorn. Okay, the last time that Saturn was at the galactic center and that it's now Pluto. Who was in Scorpio at that time? It's a coincidence. You know, it, it's totally not a coincidence. It's like this message of really going into the underworld without fear and coming up to a place of serenity and clarity 
is so huge, you know? And as a note, Isis is presently at two degrees of Aries, which is conjunct Venus right now. And Isis is really a representation in the chart of our own inner throne, okay? Isis is the element that can take the fragmented pieces of self and sew them back together to create the whole once again. And it is the place that we sit in our own power energy. And it is, again, at two degrees of Aries. So it is in the cardinal fire of getting this part of ourselves going, conjuncting, you know, Venus and bringing this you know it's like isis is there birthing being the midwife to venus as she reincarnates into aries you know venus is right now presently in a different dimension you know is communing with source creator and is about to step into the fruition of self-love and really move forward with the fire transmutation of that and isis is allowing us the space to be with her as we do this and really understand that we all have a royal divinity we all do have a throne we all do have a kingdom and a queendom of rulership you know just a couple of days and we're gonna hit regulus 29 degrees of leo you know i mean actually possibly tomorrow you know the sun or the north node is going to be at zero degrees of virgo which is where regulus is presently um it's a fixed star so it was at 29 degrees of leo for hundreds and hundreds of years so this is i mean a reaffirmation and a confirmation and you know if you want to know where osiris is osiris is at 16 degrees of pisces and that is right there with Neptune, right? Neptune is at 13 degrees. And Osiris is the one, you know, he, you, Osiris is basically, you know, the passing of the earth test, you know, are you going to um, get to move back into being a part of the whole of the entire fractal or do you need to come back because you have done too much karma and you've created too many cords here and you need to redo something? You know, so Osiris is also a representation of Pluto, also a representation of Shiva, you know, and this Brahma energy that we pull back from creation story, from crawling out of this lotus that grows out of the muck and the mud and flowering into consciousness through an individual, you know, through the individual that we are blooming our own lotuses our own heart chakra connecting up the source of the crown chakra we are in pure resonation and pure harmony today with the universal energies so i do hope that we can all sing we can all dance we can all paint we can all go for that hike we can all connect with the gems and the stones and the essential oils and you know do some ceremonies of bringing ourselves to a higher dimension you know, if we could start to really use the law of manifestation to cultivate a higher vibration of self, this is going to be a beautiful, you know, true heart opening, a true um, explosion of cosmic vibrations that have to do with unconditional love and a really deep soul retrieval of memory that lets us know, you know, that we really are part of that 144,000, the golden ratio connecting back to Earth and Venus. Um, because you're not crazy for thinking these thoughts. This is the biggest thing. Not everybody understands these concepts. Not everybody feels a higher calling. Not everybody knows that they're here for something very important. Some people really think that when they die, that that's it. That there's nothing beyond this. And I mean, it's a shame, but we're here to cultivate a higher vibration of our overstanding as it is. We, once again, need to become the living example and the living vibration of the translation of Creator Source. And so it's time for us to stop holding ourselves back, you know, and giving all that power over to other individuals in our life that don't deserve that. Because, you know, 
There's a lot of handlers that are put into our lives, a lot of Smiths that are here to block us because this soul memory and this soul retrieval is, is, is detrimental to um, the present structure of government and society. It's something that can actually heal the earth complete and move us into this newer, higher dimension that we're all moving towards. So, so um, I am going to end this broadcast here. I do wish you the best new moon and Taurus ever. I will be back tomorrow. And please do go ahead and look at the information section on this video. There is a connection to my calendar, to my PayPal. Let us connect on this Pluto retrograde special because Getting into that information has been truly transformative, not just for um, myself, but for my clients that I've been working with. It's all been a very um, huge journey into the underworld depths of the super consciousness and what it really means. And the information that's coming out during these readings is just absolutely mind blowing. And it's one particular aspect of Pluto. And it's almost like that hour could be, a, or that reading could be an hour versus a half hour. Um, there's so much to go into it with the different ages and so much information. So I do look forward to connecting with you and I will see you tomorrow. God bless. Pray to me. Absorb my life. Let me illuminate you. Close your eyes.